The following is an EWTN special presentation. An image according to the pattern that you see. After much insistence, the painting that you see above the altar here at the Shrine of Divine Mercy in Vilnius, Lithuania, is the very painting that St. Faustina had done. She directed the artist Eugenius Kazimorowski in the company of her spiritual director, Father Mikhail Sopochko. It is here in Vilnius, Lithuania, that the image is venerated, the same place where St. Faustina received the chaplet, the same city where she received all the promises that Jesus gave concerning veneration of this image and devotion to his divine mercy. The ensemble of the Shrine of Divine Mercy is providing the music today. They are, of course, scheduled to be on tour under the auspices of the original Divine Mercy Institute throughout the United States in November of 23. Presiding at this Mass is Archbishop Ginteras Grujas, who is incensing the altar currently. Also on the altar is Father Povelos Mariauskas, who is the pastor of the Shrine of Divine Mercy here in Vilnius. Once again, Archbishop Gintaras Kudoshas. Also next to Father Povelos, Father John Farrell in the foreground is concelebrating Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we gather here this Divine Mercy Sunday, here in Vilnius, where the Lord asked of St. Faustina for the Sunday dedicated to Divine Mercy, here in Vilnius, where the first Divine Mercy Sunday was celebrated and installed for the Universal Church by Saint John Paul II. We've just completed over the last 10 days the novena to the Divine Mercy with the Divine Mercy Chaplet which was also dictated to Saint Faustina by our Lord here in Vilnius. Standing before the image, the original image of divine mercy, we come before the Lord asking him to fill our hearts with that great divine mercy that he has promised on this day so that we may enter fully into the celebration of these sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind our sins and asking the Lord for his pardon and his peace, entrusting ourselves to his infinite mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, 
in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was one of heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own. But they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard-pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of the victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten of him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, even though the disciples had locked the doors of the place where they were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood before them. Peace be with you, he said. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. At the sight of the Lord, the disciples rejoiced. Peace be with you, he said again. 
As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive men's sins, they are forgiven them. If you hold them bound, they are held bound. It happened that one of the twelve, Thomas, the name means twin, was absent when Jesus came. The other disciples kept telling him, We have seen the Lord. His answer was, I will never believe it without probing the nail prints in his hands, without putting my finger into the nail marks and my hand into his side. A week later, the disciples were once more in the room. This time, Thomas was with them. Despite the locked doors, Jesus came and stood before them. Peace be with you, he said. And then to Thomas, take your finger and examine my hands. Put your hand in my side. Do not persist in your unbelief, but believe. Thomas said in response, my Lord and my God. Jesus then said to him, you became a believer because you saw me. Blessed are they who have not seen and yet believe. Jesus performed many other signs as well, signs not recorded here in the presence of his disciples. But these have been recorded to help you to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, so that through this faith you may live you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The homily will be given by Archbishop Guinteres Grujas, Archbishop of Vilnius. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Feast of Divine Mercy is a rare occasion when a priest gets a message directly from Jesus on what he is to preach about. When to St. Faustina, the Lord asked for the Sunday after Easter, the first Sunday to be celebrated as the Feast of Mercy, he also told her, on that day, priests are to tell everyone about my great and unfathomable mercy. The Lord said to Faustina, I desire that the feast of mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls, and especially for poor sinners. On that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the font of my mercy. As a matter of fact, today's gospel, several times Jesus says to the apostles, peace be with you. Interestingly enough, in the diary of St. Faustina, Jesus says, mankind will not have peace until it turns to the font of my mercy. The images that Jesus uses to talk about his mercy are those of water, a font, pour out a whole ocean of graces. The image is very similar to a person who is in a stage of dehydration, a lack of water, and yet a person who can neither get to water or has lost his sense of thirst. It is similar for us with mercy. Our sins keep us from even understanding how much we need God's mercy in order to survive. And today's feast is an invitation to go to that font, to draw on the mercy that will keep us alive. If one doesn't have a sense of thirst or cannot go
go to the source, then one needs friends who would bring that dehydrated person some water, or even in the extreme case, to set up an IV to make sure the person is able to stay alive. Where do we find this font, this font of mercy? Jesus tells us clearly in the various Gospels. He says, come to me all who labor and are burdened and I will give you rest. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who comes to me will not hunger and he who believes in me will never thirst. It is clear. The font of divine mercy is Jesus himself. It is the body of Christ in its various forms. We have Jesus depicted in the image of divine mercy. We have the body of Christ as the church feeding its people with the sacraments. But we also have the body of Christ as the communion of saints. In all three of these, we have the font of divine mercy. The image itself is a source of that mercy. Jesus said to Faustina, by means of this image, I shall be granting many graces to souls. So let every soul have access to it. St. Faustina's diary begins already talking about the image. O oh, eternal love, you command your sacred image to be painted and reveal to us the unconceivable font of mercy. You bless whoever approaches your rays and a soul all black will turn into snow. the image actually helps us to look Jesus in the eyes and from the bottom of our hearts say to him, Jesus, I trust in you. The body of Christ as the church is also the font of divine mercy. Through the sacraments, and Jesus says about this feast, that we celebrate today, the soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. On that day, the divine floodgates through which grace flow are opened. The sacrament of reconciliation is a font of divine mercy. That's why on Divine Mercy Sunday, we hear in the gospel, Jesus giving the authority to forgive sins to the apostles. And that is the road that he leads us to receive the peace he gives us. Faustina is a great example of how God works through the sacrament of confession. Faustina speaks to God through her confessor. Her understanding of mercy comes through her frequent confessions. The same way to speak to God as Faustina is available to each of us. If we can see God working through our confessor. She said, I attach great importance to the words of my confessor, greater importance to the words of my confessor than all the lights taken together that I receive interiorly. Jesus mentions communion in the Eucharist. Faustina speaks of receiving the Eucharist and having Jesus with her all day and carrying him around all day 
with the font of mercy flowing within her. That source of mercy, that fount of mercy is also available to us. But it is we who have to look into Jesus' eyes. Whether in the person of our confessor or to see him in the Eucharistic host as Faustina did. To look into the eyes of Jesus through the sacraments and to say to him, Jesus, I trust in you. This underlines the importance that Faustina often speaks of in her diary, the importance of priests as channels of divine mercy. She frequently offered prayers and sacrifices for priests and asks us to do the same. We must also pray for our priests that they be fitting channels of that divine mercy and pray for vocations so that we have more fonts of divine mercy available to us. The third aspect of the body of Christ as a font of mercy is the communion of saints. The prayers that we offer asking for divine mercy for each other. That great gift that Jesus gave Faustina and through Faustina to us, the chaplet of divine mercy is an instrument given us by Jesus to bring ourselves and other people to that font of divine mercy. In it, we call upon the power of the sacrifice of Jesus to save sinners. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the atonement of our sins and those of the whole world. Jesus comments the power of this prayer, saying, say unceasingly the chaplet that I have taught you. Whoever will recite it will receive great mercy at the hour of death. I desire that the whole world know my infinite mercy. I desire to grant unimaginable graces to those souls who trust in my mercy. The novena that we prayed over the last week is just that, bringing groups of people to the font of divine mercy, bringing both the living and the dead. Jesus says, you will do this to Faustina in this life and the next. I will deny nothing to any soul whom you will bring to the font of my mercy. And so I would encourage each of us not only to pray for divine mercy for ourselves and for others, but to ask for Faustina's intercession for us. She has a great promise given to her by the Lord that anybody that she brings to him, nothing will be denied. Let us ask Faustina today in a special way here to intercede for each and every one of us that we too by her may be brought to that font of mercy. Through this great intercessory prayer, we are able to look into Jesus' eyes in the eyes of our brothers and sisters, both living and dead, and say with confidence to him, Jesus, I trust in you. We're able to see Jesus' eyes in the eyes of other people, not only when we pray for them, but especially when we do acts of mercy. And so today, this Divine Mercy Sunday, let us respond to the invitation to come to the font of mercy 
that we may be able to receive his peace and to bring others to the font of mercy, the source, the true source of peace for all mankind. Peace be with you. Together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. As the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, let us appeal to Jesus, Divine Mercy incarnate, as he revealed himself in this city of Divine Mercy to St. Faustina Kowalska, for our needs and the needs of all humankind. We pray for the Holy Father, Pope Francis, for all his needs and intentions on this great feast of divine mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all the bishops throughout the world, especially for Archbishop Gintaras Grushas and for all the needs of the Archdiocese of Vilnius. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray pray for peace throughout the world. We especially remember the areas being ravaged by war, and in particular, Ukraine, for the victims of war, those who have died, those who have been displaced, that Jesus would pour his unfathomable mercy upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For all those who come here to the shrine in the city of mercy, to venerate the original image of divine mercy and prayerfully walk in the footsteps of St. Faustina Kowalska and blessed Father Michal Sopochko. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For those around the world who are devoted to divine mercy and for those who spread the message that Jesus, King of mercy, will continue to draw more souls to himself through veneration of this miraculous image and all the grace that Jesus promised would flow from it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, most merciful Father, we trust in you, and we entrust to you these our petitions for the outpouring of your graces in these our troubled but hope-filled times. Whatever is lacking in our faith, may the Church supply. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
during the preparation of the altar, we are hearing the ensemble of the Sanctuary of Divine Mercy. This ensemble puts together and orchestrates very traditional Lithuanian folk music influenced by ancient Gregorian chant. The music that they sing for these beautiful masses is not only ancient, but very particular to the country of Lithuania. These songs are heard almost nowhere else. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they proclaim. Yeah. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, and profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you, you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullest of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ginteris Linus, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of her resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all who pray that which with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to the coherence to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And always with you. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. During the reception of Holy Communion, of course, we are hearing the music of the ensemble of the Sanctuary of Divine Mercy here in Vilnius, Lithuania. Because we have this rare opportunity to gaze upon the original masterpiece of Divine Mercy painted by the artist Eugenius Kazmierowski under the direction of St. Faustina also in the presence, significantly, of her spiritual director, Father Michael Supochko. We will take some time during the reception of Holy Communion to consider the importance of this beautiful image. Of course, the only image of divine mercy that St. Faustina ever saw ever directed or ever wrote about, this is the one. Here in Vilnius, Lithuania, you can see the eyes of Jesus are downward cast. He told Saint Faustina, and she wrote in the diary, that he was looking for her from his cross. And that's why his eyes are cast downward. You can see that the rays are also going downward. They're not, as in some other very beautiful images, going side to side or separated in the middle, going in different directions. These rays that St. Faustina asked to have painted are intentionally going downward for Jesus is looking for his beloved at the foot of the cross, and he is bestowing upon the beloved, the church, his great unfathomable mercy. And so the rays go down. It is interesting to note that the hand of Christ opens the priestly alb he wears. The rays are not falling from him, but are given. He opens his alb as if to open the font of mercy for mankind. It's not accidental. This detail in the original masterpiece of Divine Mercy indicates that his love is freely given and no one takes it from him, which, of course, we read in the Gospel. He gives his life freely. These rays are, according to Jesus and his words to St. Faustina, red, the color of blood, and pale. The Polish word for pale that Jesus used to describe the color of this lighter ray is the Polish word blade, 
And Blade, of course, means, as we know, pale. The sort of pale of a person who may not be feeling very well, the color of their pale skin. That's what the word Blade in Polish means. But it has a second meaning. And this second meaning is important. It is water contaminated with a touch Almighty of God, blood. that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we conclude our celebration on this Feast of Divine Mercy, not only today, but let us try each and every day to one way or another look Jesus in the eyes and tell him from the bottom of our hearts that we trust in him. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord be with you. May God, by, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for joining us for the Mass of Divine Mercy in Vilnius, Lithuania, from the Sanctuary of Divine Mercy, where the original masterpiece of Divine Mercy is venerated. <laughs>